You're watching News 3, the Southern Illinois News Leader, live from WSIL-TV in high definition. News 3 starts right now. A skateboarder stops a robbery, the unusual way he became a hero. Plus, we learn the cause of this wild crash on Interstate 57. But first, new details about the murder indictment against this man after an SIU student's death. We do begin tonight with continuing coverage of the breaking news we brought to you last night at 10. An El Dorado man remains free on bond tonight after a grand jury indictment on two counts of first degree murder. Gage Bethune paid $100,000 bond and walked out of the Jackson County Jail earlier today. Now, according to these court documents, Bethune hit Praveen Varghese in the head multiple times, causing, quote, great bodily harm. A special prosecutor says blunt force trauma contributed to Varghese's 2014 death from hypothermia, which an initial autopsy listed as his cause of death. The Varghese family commissioned a second autopsy, which found blunt force trauma. The case landed in the hands of the special prosecutor who took the case to a grand jury, which late Thursday handed down the indictment against Bethune. Now, Gage Bethune has a court date next Tuesday for arraignment. If convicted on the murder charges, he could face up to 60 years in prison for each count. Family members of Praven Varghese say the news of the indictment against Bethune answered many prayers. Praven's mother, Lovely, calls it the news she had waited years to hear. News 3's Evie Allen had an extended conversation with the family today and joins us with their reaction. Evie, does the family look forward to seeing this case go to court? Well, actually, Dennis, they do. Varghese told me that there were times when she questioned herself, why am I doing this? She says the indictment for murder affirmed her decision to make this a mission to get justice for Praveen. My only mission in my life right now is get justice for my son, and I will make sure I get that. Words lovely Varghese told News 3 two years ago, after police found her son, Praveen Varghese, dead in the woods a year earlier. Thursday, Lovely learned a grand jury indicted Gage Bethune, the last person seen with Praveen, on two counts of first-degree murder. This answer, I wish it came early, but, you know, I, I can control it. This is probably how this was all planned out by the Lord. News 3 spoke to Lovely via FaceTime at her home in Chicago after she learned of the indictment. Our community and family have been coming in. This is... This is a day that we feel Praveen's voice is heard and his name is cleared. Lovely believes Bethune knows more than what he told authorities and that he has answers to what happened to her son that cold February night in 2014. A year later, a grand jury found not enough evidence to charge Bethune for any crime. Later, the case landed in the hands of a special prosecutor. The best thing we had was getting a person, uh, a special prosecutor who was willing to look into every single detail, investigate this case thoroughly. Bethune's attorney, Mike Websick's statement reads, my deepest sympathies go out to the Varghese family. However, one cannot judge a case by sympathy or emotions. One has to look at the evidence in this case, and the evidence clearly shows that Gage did not murder Praveen. But the Varghese family wants a jury to make that decision. I'm happy we are here today and from here on, whatever the law permits, let it happen. My job is done. Now Lovely says no matter the outcome from here, she'll go along with whatever happens in the end. She says she also looks forward to finally seeing Bethune face to face for the first time. Evie, does she know when she's going to get a chance to do that? Well, actually she does. Bethune has a court appearance next Tuesday. Lovely says her family plans to travel here to witness it. All right, thank you very much. Now over to Johnson County, where one person died after a crash on State Route 146. It happened around 1030 this morning at the intersection of Concord Church Lane. State police say the driver of an SUV left the roadway and crashed into a tree. Now that person was the only one inside. Troopers have not released that person's identity. Another News 3 follow-up now. Illinois State Police blame one driver for causing a crash involving four tractor trailers shutting down Interstate 57 for hours. Troopers say one of the semis did not slow down for the construction zone near the I-24 split yesterday and slammed into those three other trucks. As News 3's Brandon Morano shows us, it's got those who cleared up that mess stressing safe driving. Employees at Vernell's Towing see a lot of wrecks. Brunel's, this is Matt. 
Cleaning up the crash involving four semis Thursday was a big job for Matthew Longmire's crew. I've been here with Brunel's for about three years. It's probably one of the biggest ones I've seen. Illinois State Police say a trailing semi carrying bananas didn't slow down for construction and slammed into three other semis, causing the fiery crash. I mean, I don't know if he wasn't paying attention or what the deal was, but it caused a bitty, or pretty big wreck. A pretty big wreck that had all northbound lanes of Interstate 57 shut down for nearly six hours. Fellow truck driver Stephen Whitehurst is just glad everyone made it out alive. You see that all the time, and sometimes you just get lucky. Whitehurst says he hopes the driver of this truck and all other truck drivers learn the lesson to slow down and pay attention. You just be safe. Uh, just watch that following distance. Those working the scene just want to make sure everyone else slows down while they clear the way. A couple years ago, we had one of our drivers get hit because of stuff like that. Something Longmire doesn't want to see happen again. In Johnson County, Brandon Morano, News 3. Now the driver of that semi blamed for the crash was ticketed for failure to reduce speed to avoid an accident and following too closely. Big changes will soon come to Route 13 in Williamson County. The uh, Illinois Department of Transportation plans to reopen Samuel Road at Route 13 to traffic next Tuesday. The roadway closed uh, to traffic a few weeks ago so crews could rebuild the intersection. Also, Tuesday morning, the Craneville Main Street will shut down where it meets Route 13, cutting off access to the Plaza Drive frontage road off of Main Street. Summertime showers continue hanging on. For some of us, here's Jim with our first look outside. Rain still showing up on the local view and Doppler radar right now. Most of it is in southeast Missouri. A little more activity this hour in western Kentucky and less rain showing up in southern Illinois. We put everything into motion and see that the motion generally is from the north to the south. This is finally the back edge of the cold front pushing everything out of here. But even as it's doing that, uh, along Route 13, a few very small little showers, and the one right there on the Saline and Gallatin County line actually increasing in the last 15 minutes or so. I don't know that it's going to last real long, maybe an hour or so. A little shower in Williamson County, what was uh, quite a rainmaker around Kincaid the last hour in Jackson County just continues to dissipate and again we think everything moves on out late tonight and we could still see a lingering shower in our southernmost counties after midnight tonight but for most of us isolated storms early turning into mostly cloudy around midnight or so I think we could see a little patchy fog late tonight low temperatures in the upper 60s still a little bit on the muggy side tomorrow morning but you'll start to feel a little relief from the humidity and that should stick around for the weekend we'll run all the numbers down in the forecast in just a few minutes to the court watch now, a Chester man insists he's not guilty of federal drug charges. Jason Stoker made his first appearance on meth trafficking charges this morning in East St. Louis. Stoker will face a trial in September. He's also facing state charges in Randolph County in connection to the death of Officer James Brockmeyer. Officials say Stoker refused to pull over and Brockmeyer crashed his squad car during that pursuit. That Randolph County case has been delayed due to the federal drug charge. In Franklin County, a pair of sex offenders face new charges after arrests this week. Deputies pulled over Joshua Watkins Sunday at North Markham Beach. The 39-year-old is listed as a sexual predator on the state registry for sexually abusing a teenager. Watkins faces a misdemeanor charge for being in a public park. Then on Wednesday, deputies found Steve Bratton loitering in the North Sandusky campground at Rin Lake. The 57-year-old is a convicted child sex offender. He's no longer listed on the state registry, but still is not allowed to be in a public park. He also faces a new misdemeanor charge. Well, still ahead, an attempted robbery outside of a bank didn't end too well for the would-be crook. And you can thank this skateboarder who saw the crime in progress and rolled to the rescue. We'll show you what happened when we come back. You're watching News 3 with Dennis Turner. Carolyn Serta, Chief Meteorologist Jim Razor, and Sports with Darren Kennard. Help was pretty much the last thought I had till it was over. He stopped the robbery in a most unusual way and wins honors along the way. 
26 year old Jason Seesock used his skateboard to stop the sudden attack. It worked and today he stepped forward to get a big reward. News 3's Andrew Feather joins us in the studio with a look at what makes him a real hero. Andrew. Police and employees of Regions Bank recognized Jason Seesock for bravery after his ingenious intervention that stopped a violent robbery attempt in the bank's parking lot. Jason Seesock loves to skateboard and doing what he loves helped him save a woman from attack. He was um, behind the flagpoles in those two bushes there. June 30th, just after 10.30 p.m., 26-year-old Seesock had turned back to his parents' house from a skate park in Paducah and saw a man pop out of the bushes in front of Regions Bank on Broadway. The man, holding a piece of rebar, ran at a woman making a night deposit outside the branch. Seesock says the man swung at the woman, so he sprung into action. There wasn't much time to think about the situation once that recognition occurred, um, so I just acted. <laughs> Seesock ran in and hit the man with his skateboard before chasing him off. Friday morning, Regions Bank presented Seesock with a $500 check and a custom-made skateboard to reward his bravery. They're like my sponsor now. Branch manager Joanna Brown wanted to find a special way to reward Seesock and noticed his old, worn skateboard. You could tell it was definitely used. Um, and what a great way for us to be able to... Uh, give him something that he would actually be able to use. Seesock says he's just happy he could assist. It was just act um, and help. I mean, help was pretty much the last thought I had till it was over. Police arrested 58-year-old Russell Zonka, who now faces first-degree robbery charges in the attack. Meantime, detectives say Seesock could get a nomination for Paducah's Citizen Service Award. In studio, Andrew Feather, News 3. Look out, he's got a skateboard. <laughs> well, all that rain last night led to some flooding inside the Williamson County Courthouse. Yeah, but can we expect more wet weather this weekend, though? Jim's forecast will tell us up next. Putting accuracy first, this is News 3 Weather. We've seen some much needed rain over the last couple of days continuing in parts of the region, but this rain event is really starting to come to an end. I think for many of us in southern Illinois, we've seen all the rain we're going to see out of this event. Southeast Missouri, western Kentucky showers, even some thunderstorms possible, especially this evening. And some of the guidance I've looked at suggests we could still see some isolated rain showers, especially in the boot heel in the southern counties in western Kentucky as late as sunrise tomorrow morning. But Southern Illinois, it's really from Route 13 South, and it's just a few very light showers. And the little cell we were watching just a few moments ago that was on the Saline Gallatin County line was still increasing in strength at that point, now showing signs it's going to weaken. This is all because cooler and slightly drier air is moving in from the north, starting to soak up some of that moisture. But moving into Perryville, moving away from Chester, some heavy rain right now. Sykeston with a thunderstorm right over top creating quite a bit of lightning. A chance you could see some gusty winds anytime you see that lightning pop up. And of course, lightning is always deadly. You hear the thunder, time to move inside and make yourself safe. Dew point uh, starting to show some improvement and boy, it's stretching to find that improvement. 70 in Mount Vernon, everyone else a bigger number than 70, but off to the north of the color coding, you can see there is some slightly Less humid air moving this way. We'll get a little bit of a break this weekend. Temperature's still going to be warm in the afternoons. Poplar Bluff, some rain falling uh, 75 degrees. And most everyone else well into the 80s. Paducah still reporting 89, 87 in Marion, 86 in Mount Vernon. Pinckneyville reporting 91 degrees right now. The dew point is 72, but showing a little bit of a north breeze and a little more than three quarters of an inch in that rain gauge since midnight. We always measure from midnight to midnight here. At midnight, we had some locations with a couple of inches, and I've seen more than three inches reported from a couple of sites. So there was some isolated, very heavy rain last night. It will start to move off to the south. But right now, clouds increasing, coming in from the west, kind of the blow off from the storm activity in southeast Missouri. Those clouds will likely linger for most of us through the evening, maybe most of the overnight hours as well. And where we do see some clearing, I think we could see some patchy, dense fog late tonight. But Skycast showing everything moving away during the day tomorrow, especially. I think we may even see a little bit of sunshine in the afternoon. For tonight, the storms around turning into mostly cloudy skies and then that chance for a little bit of patchy fog. Low temperatures coming in tomorrow morning, upper 60s. And then I think it's mid 60s for Sunday morning. Sunday morning is going to be the most comfortable morning we see for a while. Of course, it's been hot and humid. It's going to cool off a little bit. And by the time we're back into next week, here comes the humidity back. So we'll see temperatures up by Monday 
and look at those low temperatures back to around 70. High temperatures back into the 90s by midweek next week. And then we'll be back into summertime pop-up thunderstorms as a possibility, sort of off and on next week. So uh, another reason we've got some rain. We don't have to complain about needing rain mm -hmm. now. We can enjoy a dry weekend. That's right. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Jim. Still to come, our unsung heroes help give confidence to differently abled kids. But first, a big night at the ballpark in Marion. Carolyn, it's Christmas in July, and Santa Claus will be making his rounds tonight at Rent One Park. The Miners get set to return to action after the All-Star break, and we'll hear how the team plans to turn things around next in News 3 Sports. This is News 3 Sports in HD. The Southern Illinois Miners are back in action tonight following a few days off for the All-Star break. They'll be hosting River City this weekend. Our Sean Conway is at the ballpark tonight. Sean, what's the plan for this team to turn things around in the second half? Darren, the, the Miners struggled to get things going in the first half of the season, struggling both to get uh, home wins and away wins and uh, posting a sub-500 record. Offensively, the Miners couldn't get the bats going when they needed to, and the bullpen struggled to support the team on the field. Heading into the second half of the season, the team is looking forward to playing a home-heavy schedule and hope they can get the ball rolling for a playoff push. Yesterday, got everybody together last night for a late workout, and really the premise was we're home now. We have 15 of 18 at home. We can start a little momentum going on our side. You know, hopefully we get hot. Uh, we definitely don't think we're out of this yet, and we think uh, we can make a run and still get in the playoffs somehow. We're not out of it yet. Tyler Stubblefield is on the mound tonight for the Miners as they take on the River City Rascals. First pitch is set for 7.05. Reporting from Rent One Park, Sean Conway, News 3 Sports. Thank you, Sean. Major League Baseball is backed as well tonight. The Cubs were scheduled to start at 6.05 in Baltimore, but they're being delayed by rain. Last word was they hope to get that started before 7 o'clock. The Cards also open the second half on the road at Pittsburgh. That one's scoreless in the top of the first, and the White Sox will be home to welcome the Mariners at 7:10, The 24th District American Legion Championship game between Metropolis and Carmi has resumed. The game was ruled a forfeit Wednesday due to an illegal substitution by Metropolis. The call was overruled, so the game picked up where they left off. Carmi scored two in the bottom of the sixth. Metropolis with one last chance, trailing 5-2 in the seventh. Last night, Heron Post 645 made it three straight 25th District Tournament titles. Heron rallied from a 4-2 deficit before beating Steelville 10-5. Both teams will advance to the 5th Division Tournament next week in Highland. The fundraising softball tournament scheduled for this weekend in Marion that we told you about earlier this week has been postponed. Organizers are moving Gwen's Hope Tournament tentatively to early October. Proceeds from that tournament will go to cancer patient Gwen Ellison. And this will be a big weekend at I-57 Drag Strip in Benton. Starting tonight, the three-day JEG Summer Door Car Shootout is expected to draw 250 entrants from throughout the Midwest and award more than $100,000 in cash and prizes. The racing is just about to get underway tonight. I could use 100 grand now. All I need a car. <laughs> you and me both, right? All right. Thanks, Darren. Still ahead, dozens of kids come together with others living with similar challenges. To show you don't have to be like everyone else to strive. Meet this week's unsung hero who brought it all together when we come back. A unique sports camp brings accomplished athletes together with kids aspiring to do better in sports. The campers and coaches do more with less. News 3's Ashley Smith explains how the camp has grown in this week's unsung hero. I was like... I want to start a camp and I'm pretty sure she gave me one of these. <laughs> in 2012, 20 campers came to Nubability Sports Camp in DeCoin. This year, more than 150 campers and 60 coaches will come to camp. Get these kids the opportunity to be kids. I mean, to be athletes, to really come out and be the best they can be at everything and show them that they were created perfectly. That's what it's all about. Sam is an accomplished athlete playing and coaching baseball at the collegiate level. He enlisted the help of dozens of other successful athletes from varsity sports to the pros. Not a matter of if, it's a matter of how. And sometimes how takes a long time to figure out, but we can always figure it out. Just talking about it is so we could be here. Like we feel like 
we were made to be here and we think that this is where we're supposed to be and this is how we're supposed to be helping and that that's why this happened to us. Some of the coaches were born this way, while others suffered injuries or accidents like Bree McMahon. She was hit by a car in 2009. First thing I asked when I came out of my coma was, what can I run again? Bree went on to play soccer in college for five years. She's back for the fourth year, coaching other aspiring soccer athletes. I only got up for a few seconds. But... Barbie Thomas is also here for her fourth year. She mainly coaches tumbling, but also helps with swimming and volleyball. Hoping that when they leave, they feel more confident in themselves and realize I can do this. I can do anything I want to do as long as I put my mind to it. Nub ability focuses on kids first, but the parents often learn valuable lessons too. Come in and they see all these amazing coaches doing it with one arm or one leg and showing them how they can do it. Um, it's, it's also cool not to see the change in the kids, but also see the change in the parents. While these coaches do not receive a paycheck for camp, they say the rewards are priceless to give these kids those steps um, to advance their career that we didn't have. The coaches are hoping someday these kids will return to camp as coaches themselves and pass on their knowledge to the next generation. Reporting into coin with this week's Unsung Hero, Ashley Smith, News 3. Coming up on News 3 at 6.30, a closer look at the impact of cuts at SIU. Plus, last night's storms leave their mark and new concerns about Illinois' credit rating. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back in just one minute for News 3 at 6.30.